It's really a bit uh, overwhelming for me, uh, to be very honest. Um, you know, when we start off our careers and we have ideas for research and uh, new projects and ways to innovate, we're always stopped by resource limitations. And the chair provides uh, a tremendous resource to actually follow your dreams professionally. There are so many questions in this field that's really in its infancy that need to be answered. And really the resources of the chair allow us to jump in and pursue those questions quickly. It allows us to acquire equipment that we need to answer questions to help people. Uh, it's, very, it's a very practical specialty. We're looking for new approaches that are minimally invasive to fix people's hearts. And the way that these people's problems were fixed in the past were major surgery. And sometimes even the best surgeons pause and say, you know, the risk of doing this is really too high. And the chair allows us to quickly explore new options to treat people. And it may be that it's generating a three-dimensional model from a CT scan to test things. Or it may be that we work with engineers on a particular problem and testing the stresses on a particular piece of equipment to see if it would be suitable for the location of the heart where it would go. It's just the ultimate flexibility that allows us to rapidly progress try new things and evaluate things in a new way. There are a lot of things that we have done in people that are one-offs. Um, they've been done once in our center or twice. And really our ability to measure how effective these types of interventions are, are very limited. The chair is going to enable us to pull in the global experience for different interventions that are rare and actually start to understand what the impact that we're able to have on a person through these very rare approaches to treating things. Something that an individual center would never be able to have. Um, when you open up the audience to include China, Brazil, India, the United States, you're talking about the real ability to know if we're helping people and how much we're helping people in a more organized way. We're looking to turn the territory, which is now case report, so a simple report of a single case into an experience that actually can guide us in the future. It can tell us what you're doing is really working well or what you're doing is not working out as well as it could. You should do it this way. And that type of guidance is critical for progress. Structural heart disease involves any intervention that deals with the body of the heart, the muscle of the heart, the tissues of the heart outside of the coronary arteries. So the routine procedures we do are closing holes in people's hearts, putting stents in people's aortas for congenital problems, replacing people's valves, the aortic valve, the mitral valve, the pulmonary valve, and the tricuspid valve. All four valves we can replace without surgery. Then we get into very particular situations. Uh, somebody has a knife wound in the chest and the knife has entered the heart. We can go and close that hole with a device. That's very specific, but that's an example of the type of thing we do. Toronto General Hospital and the Peter Monk Cardiac Centre in structural heart disease circles is really known as a one of the top centres and most innovative centres in the world in this area. So much so that when we present what we're doing at major meetings I often see jaws drop in the audience. And I've actually overheard other colleagues say that if this problem occurred in my institution, the patient would die. I'm actually most proud of helping to assemble the human resources that we have. 
because you know when it comes down to it medicine is about caring about people and without the right group of people to deliver that care the experience is limited I think when you pull together a group of people who are available 24 7 interested caring compassionate that group of people is the most important thing moving forward to make sure that we're successful.